Hello all, this is Ramesh Lama. Welcome to the video lecture. Today we will be discussing about the corner detection. As we have discussed in our previous video lectures that interest points can be defined as uh, points in image that would likely to make good features. These are the points in the image which are invariant to rotation, translation and intensity, intensity and scale changes. <coughs> There are different types of there are different interest points such as corners, edges, and blobs. So corner detection is basically detecting one type of interest points in an image. Now let's see the corner detection in more detail. Given this image, uh, in the first figure we can move the square up and down or left and right. Pixel underneath the square wouldn't change much. We can refer this as a flat region. There is no change in intensity. We can see here. Uh, however, we move this flat uh, this uh, window, we cannot detect any changes in the image uh, because it's a smooth region. Uh, it's a flat region. So let's see the next figure. We place the square over the edge. Where we uh, what we see is something we have talked uh, about before. Here we can know moving left and right, uh, we know more or less about the edge. But if we move up and down, we won't be able to see any changes uh, as a difference. So uh, there is no changes at all uh, because uh, no changes are detected at, uh, at all in the vertical direction or edge direction. So in this case, uh, we will get the difference is only in one direction. Now mm, we will see the another of uh, the last image. Uh, we see here the image of corner. In this case we have a gradient in more than one direction. No matter uh, we how we are about to translate that square or that window the pattern underneath the square will change. We can see here like the corner we can see significant changes in all direction so we can know when we have lined up um, the exactly or where it was before so the idea is we need gradients to have in more than one direction so this is basic so if we have gradient in more than one direction then we can see the significant change in all directions and we can also know where it was and when this was detected. I mean we can get more precise, we can get the information in more precisely and more accurately when we place this window over the uh, corner. So the um, this basic idea of finding corner was first introduced by Chris Harris and Mike Stephan in 1980, Mike Stephans in 1988 upon the improvement of Morabex corner detector and it's uh, uh, based on the approximation model of error model uh, sorry it's uh, based on the approximation model or error model and in simple words we can describe the uh, Harris corner detection in following three steps in first step it determines which window uh, that means which paths that small image paths produces very large variations in intensity when moved in both x and y directions that is in gradients and second is with each uh, such window found a score r is comp computed and next finally after applying a threshold to this score this score r uh, important corners are selected and marked And now let's talk about the math of Harris corner detector in more detail. Let's assume we have got an image I and uh, a window with the center located at XY. We have got this uh, image I and we have this uh, window which has a center located at XY. And uh, if we shift XY by a little bit by U and B, uh, that is uh, we shift ixy uh, by u in x direction and b by uh, by v in y direction and the take a difference of these two images that original image and the shifted image uh, and sum up over some window that means 
this window and we will calculate how much error we will get here the window is going to be some area around the center pixel and some um, or some point which is written here as w let's see here like uh, here is the uh, uh, here i have a image uh, with the here is the original image i x y and here is the shifted uh, uh, image x uh, plus i x plus u and y u u plus uh, i i y plus b and uh, what we do is uh, uh, we take the total value of e um, e which is error and uh, we are going to take the window uh, like it is some area around the center pixel and uh, and which is written as a function of double x y here and the window can be typically a square like this the square as we have seen here like square with the equal intensity and or it can be a gaussian that gives the more priority to the center pixel uh, and uh, this uh, here what we do is we get some uh, error value or we get some uh, we take some window and its shifted version of window and take the error and the window is defined by double x y let's see uh, more uh, let's illustrate it in more uh, graphically <coughs> on the left here we have an image uh, i of x y and on the right we have a new function e u v here e is the error what we're gonna do is we are going to put 0 0 in the middle or uh, middle so what uh, what if we place the square in the same place like here I have this uh, i x y and uh, if I place this shifted version i x y at the same place and take the difference and uh, estimate the error that means the error will be at e00 then what we get here is the the EUV will be 0 uh, because we have subtracted the same image from itself like when I place IXY when the IXY and this when the red uh, window and this yellow window are taken in the same place then this IX both of them will be same images so if we take the difference then it will be uh, then it will be the error will be zero that means we can see here e00 is black which represents that the uh, the error value or the difference is zero and now let's suppose we move this window just a couple of pixels like 3 2 now we move this let uh, let us say that this uh, u is set to be 3 and b is set to be uh, 2 and that that will shift this window at this location a little bit far from the uh, this original and we take the uh, we estimate the error value or we take the uh, difference and sum it over now the uh, we'll get some gray value uh, and there is the value gonna be higher like if we see here e32 the value will be grays here the intensity will be gray or it is greater than this one that means we get some uh, we get some difference between this win be between these two windows so and another thing is like if we if both of them are completely gray completely white like this window and this window are completely white our whole the image is white and if we take the difference at that case also it will be equivalent to um, subtracting the original image from the shifted uh, image having the same intensity or the same images will be subtracted that's why we get the error value to be zero uh, so um, what we were going what we are looking is for the points where we have in where we moved in uv we get these uh, changes like uh, we should get some intensity value or this error value we should get some error value S uh, or uh, we get some changes in the error value no matter how we move in u and v and 
So what we wanna figure out is we how this error function changes for the small shift. We shift by UV by, by small intensity and we see how this error value is uh, occurred or how we how this error value changes. And what we would like to see is that we get a significant change even for a small shift that would tell us no matter how we move in U or B, uh, we want to change some um, significant changes. So <coughs> what we do is we try in all directions, in different directions by changing this direction U and B. Th uh, if we change this U and B, we'll get in all directions and check and wh where we get the uh, great changes that will give us some interest point or that will give us some uh, gradient value in all directions uh, in in different directions so uh, we will try to we will try to get um, EUV in all directions and compare and uh, and we'll s we and we will select the UV that will give us the uh, that will give us the uh, significant changes value or that will give us the EU, EUV with the greater value. However, computing in all EUV in all directions and select the best one will be really slow and it will take a lot of time. Uh, so like if, if we take in all directions, we check with the uh, different values of UV and compute the uh, this e, uh, EUV uh, it will take lots of time. So what we're gonna do is uh, we gonna predict the small shift by using the Taylor series expansion of E of UV around UV being zero zero. So what we do is we will just estimate the we will estimate this by the Taylor expansion. Uh, let's see how we do this. Like uh, so, this is the equation of Taylor expansion where we say that the function uh, of small uh, delta x near zero and it can be approximated by the value at zero. This is the fun value of function at zero plus uh, the first derivative times delta x plus second derivative of the delta squared x or half of that. This is the second order uh, value and uh, this is the Taylor expansion and for Im for image uh, because uh, we, uh, it will be for the image it will be in 2d so we're gonna write that out for this expression in this way this is for the image like this is uh, and here we take uh, th like we see this as a shifted intensity value and now uh, that i x plus u and y u plus v which is the shifted intensity can be expressed as a IXY, the original value, plus derivative of IXY with respect to DX into U, plus derivative of IXY with respect to DY, B, plus the higher term. And uh, here, this DY by DIX by this derivative of D, derivative of X, uh, IXY with respect to DX gives us the IX which is the gradient in X direction and derivative of uh, IXY with respect to DY gives us the gradient in Y directions and uh, this gives us this uh, Taylor series expansion and let's go back to the error uh, term and here the error term is expressed as a square of difference between shifted intensity and original intensity this uh, I, I x plus u and y plus p is the shifted intensity and i x y is the original intensity and uh, mm, uh, it is the mm, and this is shifted over some window function window uh, which is defined by w x y and now, after we do the Taylor series, uh, Taylor series expansion, we can replace this uh, x plus u, uh, the shifted intensity, by the Taylor series uh, value, which is i x y u uh, i x plus p y. 
this ix is the derivative or uh, gradient in x direction and uh, y is the uh, gradient in y direction iy is the iy is the gradient in y direction and here we can see that this ixy and this ixy can be cancelled out so we get this expression this uh, euv is equal to wxy uix plus py whole square and now we can further rearrange this by breaking into two vectors uv and ixy here to be uv and ixy and when we multiply the vector uv uh, with ixy uh, like we have two vectors if we multiply these two vectors then we get the previous expression uix plus piy uh, whole square then we are going to expand it since square like uh, since it's square uh, uh, like uh, we uh, here uh, w remains like we can see here we just expand uh, we just expand this square into um, these two terms like uh, uv uh, uv ix iy and its transpose and transpose of uv and what we do next is we put this uh, we bring this wxy inside and bring this uv outside because wxy uh, is the scalar quantity so we can move it inside or outside it doesn't matter so finally what we get is we uh, then this term this ix iy this wxy and this two term ix iy uh, transpose ix iy can be uh, replaced with we can um, write it as m which we call the uh, moment matrix second moment matrix and thus we can um, measure the changes uh, here uh, this m represents the double xy ixy and transpose of ixiy here m and we can measure the measure uh, we can measure uh, the measure of changes can be approximated by this this is the EUV or we can say this uh, that error value we can approximate it by this expression it is not and here M is the 2 by 2 matrix we can see here M 2 by 2 matrix computed from the image derivatives we can see like M is here IX square IX IY IX IY and IY square which are the gradients like IX is the gradient with respect to X iy is the gradient with respect to y and ix iy is the multiplication of these two so this m term consists of only gradients and this window function and we can see here some examples like uh, ix square this is the gradient along x direction this is our image and if we take the gradient along x direction and take its, take its take its square then we get this image and this is for iy and this is the multiplication of iy ix and iy and this sum over some image region area we are taking for the corner like this double x y will define as the uh, as we have as we have said earlier it, it is some window function or uh, it will give us some image region and next is now Mm, so M is the here we can see here M is the covariance matrix uh, and uh, uh, it is the covariance matrix of uh, of gradients and uh, this result EUV we can see now if we uh, again expand it then we can write uh, this error term in terms of the quadratic equation this is this is how we can write in the quadratic equation and this quadratic equation it will give us the ellipse like uh, this quadratic equation represents the equation of ellipse and the surface EUV uh, in this quadratic form is being approximated essentially by this parabolic shaped form we have got this parabolic shaped form and if we take a fixed value of e and we are gonna take some constant value like we if we fix some and we'll get 
the different ellipses like here with this equation we will get the ellipse with the and that, that that will be defined by this value k and this is the uh, and this is the we can as we have said that this is the equation of uh, ellipse in u and v space uh, so we can draw like here we have we can draw the difference uh, we can different ellipses and that was dif uh, for different values of k uh, so we can think about the way that we are expo approximating this whole surface is uh, uh, is as a quadratic surface that gets bigger and bigger and each different level is an ellipse we can see here like as we change the value of k uh, we can get the different ellipses ellipses and now if we look at this uh, ellipse more carefully and uh, now let's take the case uh, let's take the case where the gradients in every point is uh, in the window is either horizontal or vertical but not in slanted like this is the window this is the window and we have got the gradient uh, we have got the gradient in either x direction either x direction or in y direction but not in the uh, but not in the slanted or but not uh, like in the diagonal uh, form so and here some place it will be vertical and some place it will be horizontal and but no, never uh, both ix and iy are never or non zero at the same time so uh, that uh, would mean that these terms ix and iy would be always zero we can see here like this is the case where we have axis aligned corners then we will we will have these two terms we will have either ix either only ix or only iy but not two at the same time then what we get is this ix iy will be zero and we'll get these two uh, and we can represent this equation in this form and that would mean uh, yeah, and uh, like it will result to this uh, uh, form and here what we see is uh, the result uh, can be written in terms of lambda 1 and lambda 2 with off diagonals to be 0 and it's a full rank matrix that is the lambda and lambda 2 except if one of those is 0 and if you do uh, it wouldn't be full rank matrix if one of those is zero like if one lambda one or lambda two is zero then it will not be a full rank uh, equation and for example if uh, the i y square were zero and there is no gradient in y direction only the horizontal uh, only in the horizontal direction then that will give us the uh, then uh, that would mean this uh, that this matrix would only have one of this value I th either lambda 1 or lambda 2 and probably this uh, is not uh, really a good corner because uh, we only have gradient in horizontal uh, direction not in the vertical direction so if we have only if one of this is 0 like if lambda 2 is 0 and we have got only lambda 1 that means we will have the gradient in only one direction that is in the x direction not in the y direction uh, so Mm, something about this lambda 1 and lambda 2 tells us uh, how good a corner or the location in the image is so now we can say that if either of lambda is close to 0 then this is not a corner so we can we look for the location where both of those are large like so but like uh, this lambda 1 or lambda 2 if one of these is 0 if then that will give us like it's the the edge is only in or the gradient is only in one direction so our goal is to find the uh, find the corner or uh, that means we need to have lambda 1 and lambda 2 to be greater than 0 or it should have some significant value now we can take the ellipse and diagonal diagonalize through the rotation here we can see that here m is symmetric and uh, we can represent it in terms of diagonal di diagonal uh, we can diagonalize it or we can decompose it into the 
eigen value and eigen uh, we can uh, decompose we can eigen decompose it and where lambda 1 and lambda 2 uh, represents the eigen value and r gives us the rotation matrix or it gives us the eigen vector and uh, we can think m as being sort of rotated or unrotated by r and then its diagonal matrix and uh, it is a diagonal matrix it is rotated by r inverse and then its inverse rotated by again r and so we can say now uh, we can go for the eigen decomposition of matrix m and here we can visualize this m as a ellipse with axis lengths determined by the eigen values and the orientation determined by the r here its axis we have got two axis of this ellipse and it uh, and its axis is determined by this lambda or eigen value and this is uh, and its uh, uh, eigen uh, and its uh, direction is uh, and its slope is determined by this r and for more detail about the eigen decomposition we can uh, we can we can further uh, uh, check this uh, eigen values and eigen vector in more detail uh, i haven't included it here because uh, actually i haven't in included the eigen decomposition here i have just uh, put here the uh, direct eigen decomposition of matrix m so uh, what uh, I'm going to say, say is that here I have uh, we have ellipse and uh, you know, with the uh, constant e that is constant error and uh, what we have done is what we, we can say is that it's uh, the the lambda 1 and lambda 2 will uh, deter, uh, will determine the axis length and uh, uh, and this ellipse with the constant e or constant errors and so for places where its value is uh, where it has a very narrow uh, ellipse the e changes very quickly here like the at this narrow point this is the direction of faster change uh, here the with the with this lambda value with lambda max it will the direction will change very fast in this region and with lambda min the direction will change or the direction of the slowest uh, this gives us the uh, this gives uh, like the direction um, like the changes uh, where as uh, like it goes very slowly in this direction when that is determined by lambda mean and uh, we have to uh, move further distance in order to f in order for that uh, value to change in this direction we have to move further and so what uh, I'm t uh, telling is that the eigenvalue of matrix uh, M matrix are the indicative of the coordinates of that matrix like for this matrix M this lambda 1 and lambda 2 this eigenvalues will determine that the uh, coordinates like whether it's, it belongs to corner or it belongs to edge or it belongs like it belongs to edge or it belongs to corner or it belongs to uh, none of these two or like flat region uh, will be determined by this lambda value so what we are going to do is here is the uh, do we are classifying or we will classify our image points based upon the eigenvalues in flat areas here in flat areas both lambda 1 and lambda 2 are uh, very small and it's if it's perfectly flat everything would be zero and because the gradients uh, were completely uh, zero everywhere uh, that would mean how I move nothing like however I move how I move nothing changes likewise if I just uh, if just one of the eigenvalue is large that means uh, in some direction that changes quickly so if I move the that direction but uh, it's zero in another direction and it uh, it can move as much as I want uh, it's what happens along an edge like uh, either in either lambda 1 or lambda 2 like if uh, only the value of lambda 1 is uh, uh, increased and lambda 2 is zero then that gives uh, the gradient in only one direction 
and similarly in this case as well if lambda 1 only changes and lambda there's no changes on lambda 2 then it's also in the uh, uh, it also gives the gradient in some directions and when both of the eigenvalues are bigger and approximately same then it's the corner and when both are bigger lambda 1 and lambda 2 are uh, bigger and they have almost equal in the, uh, equal value here e increases in all directions that we have and that our e uh, changes e increases in all directions now uh, uh, this means that we move we have to do is to find the eigenvectors and eigen values this eigen values and eigen vector will give us the uh, is uh, the corner or edge or some flat region so now if we look the linear algebra here the determinant of the matrix that's actually the product of eigenvalues here determinant uh, determinant of m will be the uh, product of lambda 1 and lambda 2 and the other thing uh, is the trace of the matrix which is the sum of eigenvalues here lambda 1 and lambda 2 and so the determinant of 2 by 2 matrix is uh, easy to compute and trace is easy to sum them up and Harris operator is just to compute some function r uh, and uh, we take the matrix m take its determinant minus the some constant of the square of the trace and empirically constant is uh, here we have uh, constant k it is set to 0 0.04 uh, to 0 0.06 it's set empirically empirically so r depends only on the eigenvalues of m and uh, if r is large like r will be large for the corner uh, like r depends only on m and r is large for corner and uh, it's because both lambda 1 and lambda 2 are large gives us large uh, gives us the larger r and if only one of lambda is large and the product term goes small uh, whereas the one lambda is large so r value is negative along the edge and if r is small lambda 1 and lambda 2 is small everything is small there is the flat region so with this uh, r value we can determine the uh, we can classify the corner edge and the flat region so here is the steps of the Harris corner detection like first what we do is we compute the uh, gradient along x uh, compute the x and y derivatives of the image and we mm, compute the product product of the uh, image a product of the derivative for at each, each at each pixels and we compute the sum of products uh, uh, sum of uh, products of derivatives at for at each pixels then we define each pixels as a matrix as x y and we compute the response of detector this r and threshold on the value of r and we compute the non-max suppression we has we ha which we have already discussed in our previous lecture and now let's see some example here is here we have uh, two pictures and the it is the picture of um, toy giraffe and we can um, see lots of differences orientation it changed head is rotated and things have shifted a bit like we can see here we can see the lots of differences between these these two uh, images here we compute the derivative and compute m matrix and compute the error r function and plot them uh, in the MATLAB uh, using the some pseudo color map and we can see this picture this is the after we compute and uh, uh, after we compute the r then we get uh, this uh, s matrix this is the plot of r next we threshold the r and here is the uh, plot um, points that r is above some threshold point this is the plot of r above some threshold points and next we do non-maximal suppression uh, and where only where we keep only points that are locally higher value than anybody else and this is the pixels greater than its neighbor and uh, then it's uh, local maxima as we have um, studied we have discussed in our uh, previous class 
about this uh, uh, non-maximal suppression and these points can be plotted uh, on the original and uh, actual giraffe and we can see like this is the uh, points that we get from our um, color detection so far and what we do is we place it over this original image and we see here these red dots are the points detected and we can notice that we have found number of points repeatedly for example here on nodes like we can found repeatedly in these two pictures we can see here like the the points on the nodes at this point at the uh, right nose trill and the points on ears points on the back spot points on the bottom like we can see these points are repeated everywhere in both of the images and uh, what we can say is the points is reliably found uh, many of the same points and if we remember the interest points and uh, the, uh, or the key point we need to reliably and we, uh, we need the reliability and precision and we have found some of points and uh, find the in the same location in the scene and that would uh, what makes the good features so uh, what we can see here is we have seen the points that are repeatedly found in two images uh, even though it is rotated or its uh, position is changed we found these points and uh, that uh, that that uh, satisfies the uh, how, what we call the re repeatability feature of uh, of any uh, re repeatability of the any feature so uh, we can say that it is it can be that can be found in this corner detection technique so that makes the good feature and uh, this is all about the uh, Harris corner detector and there are some other versions of Harris detector that is tricks only the difference in uh, these uh, methods are they have uh, estimated the the value of r in different ways like here lambda 1 minus alpha lambda 2 by tricks and what it has done uh, the slit uh, key has uh, what he has done is he has taken the ratio of multiplication and the summation of this lambda and c tomasi has taken just the r as a lambda 1 so it's all about uh, the corner detection and in our next lecture we'll, uh, we'll discuss about the motion and the optical flow.